We spend a lot of time going over the details of acute myeloid leukemia. I'm going to talk briefly about acute lymphoid leukemia, or ALL, the one with the other middle initial. So the lymphocytes are the white cells that help fight chronic infections, such as respond to your flu shot, things like that. Much less common in adults, it's the most common of the acute leukemias in children, but it's only about 20% of adult acute leukemia. The approaches are somewhat similar. The way people present with infection, bleeding, and weakness from fatigue and anemia are very much the same. The diagnostic approach is also very much the same. You have to confirm things by bone marrow studies. It's confirmed by the flow cytometry, immunophenotyping. Chromosomes are important. There's a particular one here called a Philadelphia chromosome that you can see in chronic myeloid leukemia, but you can also in acute lymphoid leukemia, which may be a little bit confusing. That's very important to confirm because we have different treatment for that group. So the approaches through the initial treatment, trying to wipe out the leukemia with an intensive treatment in the hospital, usually somewhat shorter than acute myeloid leukemia. People are frequently in for three or four weeks. You may receive something called Neupogen or Neulacid to stimulate your white cells to come back. That's a safe drug in acute lymphoid leukemia because we're worried about the lymphocytes and Neupogen or Neulacid stimulates the myeloid or the other cell line and helps you recover quicker, clear any infections, get off your antibiotics and go home a little quicker. So the good news about ALL, if there is any good news about any leukemia, is that your hospitalization is somewhat shorter. You do not do that bone marrow in the middle. We treat people, do a bone marrow at the end when their blood counts recover. They come back, patients with acute lymphoid leukemia come back for more consolidation treatments, but frequently for shorter ones. And the real difference is here, usually it's about six total courses of treatment. Hospitalizations like the AML patients are usually for three to five days for the consolidation treatments. We have to follow your blood counts as outpatients in between times. But the things that are a little bit different with ALL uh, are really the risk of disease in your central nervous system or in the brain or spinal fluid. So one of the additional things you get uh, is uh, this treatment directly into the spinal fluid. We do a lumbar puncture or a spinal tap check it for leukemia cells, and we put chemotherapy directly into the spinal fluid. And we do that a number of times over the six or eight months of your first treatment and your consolidation treatment. We usually start with the consolidation or booster treatments, and we do that anywhere from once a month to once every couple of weeks to try to prevent infection, uh, prevent leukemia cells from getting into the spinal fluid. With that treatment, it's only about 5% of patients that have that complication. Without it, it would be 30 or 35%. So it's very important to get that done. It's not, uh, and most patients tolerate that relatively well. The other thing that's a little bit different with um, ALL is there's maintenance treatment with ALL. So once you finish these booster treatments after six or eight months, there's good, there are good data that maintenance treatment or ongoing treatment is very important in ALL. That's different from acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, and that maintenance treatment is relative to the other things you go through is relatively well tolerated. The most common regimen people use is an outpatient regimen, five days of steroids given uh, by mouth, a dose of vincristine or one of the drugs you take once a month every four weeks as an IV injection, and then two drugs, six mercaptopurine um, or perenthal, you take every day as pills. That's probably the hardest one for you, but it is important, so remember to take those. And methotrexate you take as a pill once a week. And that goes on for anywhere from 18 months to two and a half years. So people take a year and a half to, to two and a half years of that, that treatment in general. But it does make a difference in decreasing the risk of your leukemia coming back. You will be going to the doctor's office uh, once a month to get your injection, have your blood counts checked. Early on, we might check your blood counts every couple of weeks to make sure we don't knock them too low and we adjust those pill doses. But on the whole, uh, people tolerate this treatment. Many patients are back at work, back to their normal activities during this time, and have a very good quality of life. But it is important to decrease the risk of leukemia coming back. The other thing I want to mention very briefly about the initial induction therapy is the drugs are different. Uh, vincristine is a drug given weekly for usually four weeks. Donorubicin, which is the anthracycline, or idorubicin, is given the first three days, similar to AML, but there is no cytarabine. Instead of that, we may or may not use cyclophosphamide, and there's a drug called asparaginase, which is a shot that you get twice a week for about three weeks. So those treatments are different, and the consolidation treatments are very different from AML, but the concept of wiping out the disease, letting you grow back and go into remission, and then doing some booster treatments is very much the same AML and ALL, 
and the differences being the treatment into the spinal fluid and the maintenance treatment at the end to try to maintain those remissions.